Hi everyone, Talia from Zart Art. Today we're going to be working with fashion design templates. to do is use these fashion templates, also known as fashion croquis, to create a positive and negative space. So what I'm going to do is cut around these figures in different styles. So some will have a dress, maybe some will have pants, and then once we've cut out those shapes, we'll lay some different textures underneath them. So I'm going to use a variety of different materials to make some sheets with different patterns and colours on them. So they'll go underneath and you'll see that the fashion croquis look like they're wearing different styles of clothing. So if you are doing this as a lesson with students, you might want to break it down into three separate lessons. So three times one hour lessons, the first lesson might be looking at different kinds of fashion and design, drafting some different garments like the pants and dresses, the different styles that students might like. And then lesson one and two will be working on experimenting with different materials. And lesson three would be actually cutting out the croquis. And then from there you can interlay the designs and take photos of the finished work. Now the first step is to make some of our different backgrounds. So I've got some watercolour paints as well as some cartridge paper here. So it's not going to be anything too strenuous. I'm just going to put some colour down so we've got a background to work with when we've finished our croquis as well. So these ones are just pearlescent watercolour paints. So just like any other dry watercolour paint, you just add some water to activate it and then you can spread it on the paper. You just make sure with these you mix them quite well just so you get enough pigment on your brush to spread over the paper. So we'll use a few different tones just to create some interest in the colour blending. This is also good experimentation for the students if they're not used to using a variety of different materials and you can let them try a variety of different things and not all students have to use the same thing either. Now I've finished my shiny piece of paper. So this can be our first background. So we'll just leave that to dry. Next, we will use some magic clay to build up some texture onto the surface. So this will look quite interesting with the fashion croquis. So I'm just going to mix two colors together and then do some modeling techniques to create some interesting texture. So because Magic Clay is a paper-based modelling clay, it will stick quite easily to the paper because it does have a mild adhesive into it. So you won't need any glue or anything to use this. Okay, second piece of paper has some um, interesting texture into it. So with your paper, you don't have to cover the whole A4 piece because our fashion croquis are quite a bit smaller than that. So I'll leave this one to dry with our watercolor piece of paper. And then we can move on to our next one. Now the next background we'll do is just a paper collage one. So we've got some super tack to stick down our paper and we've got some collage paper pieces here. So they're already cut out into different shapes and sizes so they'll work quite well with the different patterns. So 
So these collage papers are quite handy to have. They come in a 500 gram bag, so there's quite a lot of paper to go around. And they're all handmade as well. So there are lots of different ones from embossed to hand stitched. There's shiny ones, different texture ones. So if you are looking for collage paper and you don't need full sheets, then this is a really good option, especially if you're doing something like this. Now we've got our collage paper background. Again, you don't need to fill up the whole space because our croquis are a bit smaller, so that will be fine to dry. And our last one that we will do is just some Poskas on cotton. So this is just so you can see a bit of the difference between having a paper background and having a fabric background. So this is just colored cotton shirting and these are the Posca markers. Now we've finished our fourth and final background, so just some Posca on cotton. We've got our four backgrounds and now we can work on the fashion croquis. Okay, now we've got our template and these do come in a variety of different figures as well, so there are male ones that you can use. So what I'm going to do is just use a pencil and draw an outline of the clothes that these are going to wear that I can then cut out. So you can print out the fashion croquis on some lighter paper or you can cut it out of the cardboard stock that it is already on. If you do use the cardboard it is quite a bit thicker so you won't get any ripping when you are cutting it out and it will be quite strong so if you wanted to use it for a variety of different things it's not likely to tear. So now we're just going to draw the outline of the clothes onto the croquis. So I'm just going to start off with this one and do something nice and simple. So we'll just do a short sleeve dress on this. So we'll make the dress just above knee length. So thinking of the figure and how these clothes will fit, they're not going to stay completely on the outline. So you can make it fan out a little bit depending on what kind of dress or outfit you are making them wear. What you might want to do if you were doing this with students as well is just get them to black out where they are going to cut. So we're going to have to do a neckline as well. So this will just help them figure out where exactly they're making their cuts and what not to cut out. So something like these hands, you want to keep them in. So we'll just black out around that so we make sure not to cut off the hand of the figure. We'll just black all of that out. It doesn't have to be neat because it will be chopped out. And we'll have that sleeve, make that a bit puffier up there. Great, so that's just a nice simple dress. And we've got our cutting mat underneath, so Ethan doesn't get mad when I cut up his table and you won't get mad when the kids cut up your things. Ain't that right? <laughs> yes, it is. So this is just a scalpel knife. So as you can see, it is very sharp. If you were doing this with maybe younger kids, I probably wouldn't do this with anyone younger than grade six level. There are some safety knives like Slice brand have a few knives that are quite safe for kids to use. So quite hard to cut themselves, but hopefully you don't have kids that want to stab anyone. So you'll be safe to use these. We just cut directly on the outline and try not to go too far. So you can just make smaller cuts instead of one long line. Might help you control the knife a bit better. And also don't be afraid to move the paper around as well to help you with the direction of the knife. So if you are doing multiple croquis, you might want to cut them down into smaller pieces so maybe a four pieces of paper instead of a three just so it's easier to move the paper around as you're cutting so 
So you should be able just to pop out your cardboard cutout. If you find that some lines haven't cut completely, you can just go over them again. So they're quite easy to fix up. So there we have our first one. So quite a simple dress. And again, you can cut those lines out if they don't really suit what you're looking for. You can also use precision scissors as an alternative. If you were printing this on just general cartridge paper, you can fold the croquis and then cut into them because this is quite a large shape. It's very easy to do with smaller scissors. So if you did want to do it with younger kids, that's an option as well. So just to give you an example of how this will look, we've got our first croquis and you can just change up those different backgrounds. So now we're going to cut out the other two and give them some different styles to work with. Now we've cut out all three of our figures wearing different outfits. Of course, you can make them more complicated. You can add things like belts and different kinds of shirts as well. You could even cut out parts and then color in other parts and then interlay just certain sections like maybe a jacket or a skirt or anything else. But for now, these are just our simple designs. And with our backgrounds, we can change them up. We can do all different ones but just to give you an idea. That might be how you set them up. We'll put that there. So you can see they're all different and you can change the backgrounds however you want. You can even move them around slightly to find a certain area of each background that you've created or even using things around your classroom or found objects works pretty well. So even just the cutting mat itself is quite interesting or even the wood background of the table could be a different way of working with the kids to show those backgrounds or try some new materials. But as a finished piece, I would probably have a few different backgrounds ready to go as well as using found objects and getting the students to take photos if they have access to phones or iPads that they can use in the class and then having those photos as the finished piece and then keeping these fashion croquis as well as their backgrounds as things that they can have in an art journal or even annotate and then they can use them later on. So this is a fun way to introduce kids to visual communication and design. It's also really fun if you're doing any kinds of musicals or costume design so you can incorporate this as an art activity as well but otherwise it's really just a lead into design and a quick look at fashion if you wanted to do that with your students. Thanks and bye. <laughs> Make it end.